Continuing to episode 8, the citizens of the Redia Kingdom appear peaceful, unaware of what is happening behind the scenes. Soon, there will be a coronation ceremony for the new emperor. Oz is seen on duty, monitoring the streets to ensure security. Before the coronation, the MC pays tribute to the previous emperor. As the 23rd emperor, Emperor Goth brought a super industrial revolution to the kingdom. Human civilization flourished thanks to Emperor Goth, eliminating the need for reliance on magic. The human race regained its honor through science and military power. However, Emperor Goth is not immune to the threat of illness, leading to his current demise. Nevertheless, the MC is confident that the people will always remember Emperor Goth, who bestowed numerous blessings upon the world. Afterward, the MC announces that Redia will have a new ruler. The citizens present are already very excited. Although this is a coronation ceremony, the appearance of Queen Dorothea as the new ruler resembles an idol concert. She is also wearing an idol costume and dancing accompanied by some girls. It seems that Dorothea intentionally does this to spread her love magic to all the men watching her. Everyone, whether in person or online, becomes infatuated with her performance. The topic immediately goes viral on social media. Meanwhile, in a country with a structure similar to Asia, some people there are also watching the coronation ceremony of the Redia Kingdom. However, for some reason, it seems they are not affected by the love magic. In fact, a man with a scar on his eye learns that the new ruler is a witch. He also knows that Dorothea, the witch, eliminated her own kind with scientific power, then elevated herself to queen and took over the world. After finishing her song, Dorothy wears a crown on her head and is officially crowned as queen. At the same time, the head of intelligence, Shirusagi, is also watching Dorothy using her phone. She is in the southern hemisphere desert looking for Adonis. However, for now, she is at a dead end. Adonis is clever for destroying the terminal she took from Yamato, making it impossible for Shirusagi to track his current position. She is forced to search for him slowly. Currently, Adonis and Doroka are continuing their journey on a motorcycle. Even though Doroka insisted on joining, Adonis has no intention of giving up on revenge. Doroka states that she has an idea. According to her, there must be many good people in this world, just like Punch, so she asks Adonis to make an exception and not kill such people. Adonis immediately rejects her. Clearly, Adonis allows Doroka to come along as long as she doesn't interfere. Then, Adonis wants to confirm Doroka's magic. Her love magic can make men melt and control them. If that's true, Adonis wonders why Doroka didn't use that magic on him in Redia. He is convinced that Lady Ophelia would have instructed Doroka to bring him back, even if it meant using that magic. Besides, that would have been the quickest way. In Redia, Doroka, on the contrary, tried to persuade Adonis. He wants to know why Doroka did that. Doroka simply answers that she didn't want to do it their first meeting. Well, at least Adonis agrees with that. Shortly after that, Adonis and Doroka arrive in a small town with a sign reading Sand Land. The condition of the sign and the buildings in the background seems to have been abandoned for a while. Adonis instructs Doroka to wait near the motorcycle while he checks around. However, Doroka seems panicked and wants to come along. Despite being a bit troublesome, Adonis allows it. By the way, Adonis becomes curious about the large shoulder bag Doroka has been carrying. It turns out that the bag contains many items given by Punch. There are canned food, nutritious biscuits, bandages, blankets, and various drinks. In addition to these items, Doroka also shows a portable tent. When the button is pressed, it turns into a relatively large snowman-shaped tent. Adonis seems uninterested in all of Doroka's explanations and walks away first. From the outside, it seems like there's nobody in this town. Dorka views it as a ghost town, even getting paranoid about the possibility of ghosts appearing. Adonis observes that there are no signs of fights in this town. He wonders why it has become uninhabited. Afterward, they decide to enter the largest building in town, the police station. Perhaps they can gather some information there. Adonis warns Doroka to be careful as the building is old. Just as he mentioned that, Doroka suddenly screams because a mouse passes by. When things settle down, Doroka is startled again because a bat flies by. Not only that, she also gets caught in a spider web, and her foot gets stuck in the decaying wooden floor. Adonis becomes quite frustrated, especially since he had advised her to be cautious. 
As they continue to climb the stairs in the building, a hologram of a police figure suddenly appears. The hologram is still functioning well and provides information about various services in the office. Doroka screams again, thinking there's a ghost. It seems she is not familiar with hologram technology. Adonis then explains that the person in the hologram is just a 3D image. However, the hologram no longer serves any purpose as the town's residents, protected by the police station, are no longer present. Adonis and Doroka continue to explore the police station, hoping to find useful information. They even enter the underground prison in the office. Despite both of them having unpleasant experiences with prisons, they still explore it. Suddenly, Adonis stops because he hears a sound not far from there. He tells Doroka to stay silent for a moment. The sound becomes clearer, and it seems to be the sound of someone singing. And indeed, there is a middle-aged man singing with a guitar accompaniment inside a cell. Next to him, it looks like someone is sleeping. When Doroka tries to talk to him, the man doesn't hear and continues singing. Then, Adonis gives Doroka permission to shout at him. Finally, the man is startled by Doroka's loud voice. Of course, he is confused by the arrival of Adonis and Doroka. Supposedly, there should be no one left in this town. Doroka explains that they are just wanderers passing through this town by chance. For some reason, Adonis' face looks serious as he observes the objects around the man. Then, the man asked why wanderers like them entered this place, as seen there's no one in this town. However, it's Adonis who finds it strange that there's a man inside the prison. With innocence, the man replies that he is a prisoner, so it's normal to be in jail. Even so, Adonis realizes something peculiar about the prison cell the man entered. He also doesn't believe that the man is a prisoner. Soon enough, Adonis understands what's happening to the man and decides to leave. He says there's no point in staying in this town. Hearing Adonis' words, the man recalls that the people in this town also felt the same way before. That's why they all left. More precisely, everything changed because of the super-industrial revolution. Humans managed to eliminate the witches. However, this town still lives in poverty. It's understandable that its residents became disgusted. The future of humanity, hope, and pride brought one grand dream after another, causing a massive migration. The man feels that the current world situation is similar to when the witch hunt began. According to him, in this era, everyone is just imitating what the first person did. Adonis becomes curious if there's a nearby large city. The man answers that there's the Minuta city about 70 kilometers to the east from here. After learning this, Adonis urges Doroka to leave promptly. Before leaving, Doroka apologizes for disturbing the man while he was singing. Once outside the police station, Doroka feels pity for the man. If left alone, he will die of hunger. Since this town is uninhabited, Doroka asks to release the man. If Adonis refuses, Doroka insists on giving the man some food from Punch. Adonis can't understand why Doroka didn't realize it. He informs her that the prison cell wasn't locked. Adonis feels that what the couple needs is not food. They only need undisturbed peace. Dorokut is a bit confused about why Adonis refers to them as a couple. It turns out that the person sleeping next to the man is his wife, who has already passed away. Her body has fully turned into a skeleton. The man, Sasha, calls her by name. He sings for his beloved wife. Indeed, the man doesn't want their time to be disturbed by others. It seems the man harbors deep regrets. In the past, the people in this town insisted that Sasha was a witch. Therefore, they imprisoned his wife. Since the people in this town are no longer around, the man promises to always be with his wife. He deeply regrets not being able to protect Sasha back then. Doroka didn't expect such an incident. Setting that aside, Adonis now plans to go to Minuta City after hearing the information from the man.